As in episode 10, obviously we need to make something big and I thought what better way to finish this series than giving you guys more tips about how to use your Maya 2020 features the best way possible. Because I believe that Maya 2019 and 2020 have been some of the biggest drops that Autodesk has done um, and for an animator and I think that there's a lot to actually kind of um, get to um, as an animator. Uh, features that you can actually kind of just set and forget um, that will help you a ton. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as a first tip, um, I have to go back a little bit because as an animator, I didn't know I actually wanted this feature until I saw a plugin that had this feature that I'm going to show you next. Now, uh, the fact that Autodesk has added this feature to Maya means that they are listening to animators like myself and actually implementing new features that make our life much easier. Now, uh, this feature is something to do with a graph editor and something that I've been waiting for years, so I'm super excited to see it in Maya. So let me show you. So whenever you're actually animating, uh, you spend most of your time as an animator here in the time slider, right? You actually kind of uh, just doing your animation, tweaking it, make sure that it's better, and this is half of your time. The other half of your time, you spend it on the graph editor. So you actually spend a lot of time like kind of a selecting a controller and, and kind of like going through between your timeline and your graph editor here, right, on top. So you set your keys and then you go to your graph editor and you modify your keys. Now, um, the problem that I had all the time with Maya is that whenever you went on the time slider, you can actually move your time slider and see your viewport changing, right? So your viewport is actually kind of a moving correctly as you want it. Now, whenever you are here in the graph editor, and this is a new feature, you can select this top arrow on top here and basically have your character move as well, just as if you were uh, uh, on a time slider moving your keys. Now, my only problem is that whenever you select a key, the time slider doesn't change. So what happens is that you spend, like you actually have to go to the key in order to see your changes. At that point, you can see the changes. You don't want as an animator to select a key and without seeing what's going on in the viewport, change that key, especially as you are inexperienced. That is working blind and there's nothing worse than working blind. So what uh, most animators end up doing is actually moving the, the time slider to the key that they want to change and then basically change the key or delete the key or something like that. So it's a whole lot of clicking between either the time slider or this uh, graph slider and you have to select the key correctly in order to see what you're doing, right? Only then you can have a before and an after. Now, the plugin that I find out after years of frustration was basically a plugin that allowed me to basically, as soon as you select the key, you would like the time, this bar here would snap to that key. Now, thankfully, Autodesk has added that feature now by default in Maya, which is a blessing. Once you get used to this, it's very hard to go back. <laughs> so uh, for you to actually get that working, uh, the only thing you have to do is go to select and then go snap time to selection right there. So now, every time you actually highlight a key, you can see the time slider is moving to where that key is and he avoids a bunch of clicks avoids like it saves you a bunch of time not having to actually clown it, go click around just to see what you're doing in your time uh, in your graph editor so it's really really nice really really powerful and I'm really glad that Autodesk added that by default and the second tip that I have for you guys is marking menus so marking menus for those that are not uh, used to it is basically um, whenever you are actually uh, on the perspective you can just press spacebar and you have a marking menu. This is a marking menu in Maya. So you can have them customized from way back in the day to be anything. This is by default what you get. And then if you actually click, right click on any marking menu, it changes what you can see. Instead of going up here to select whatever you want in the main menu of Maya, you can do the same thing right there. As you can see, it gives you even file, new scene, open scene, all of that stuff is here, which is really cool. Now, you can do the same in the graph editor, believe it or not, 
The only difference that you have to do in the graph editor, if you right click in the graph editor, normally you get this, insert key or isolate key or something like that. In order to get the marking menu in the graph editor, you have to go shift S and then you left click instead of right click. So now you have options. So within this key, for example, if I select this key, within this key, I have keys and it allows me to either delete the key or convert the key or paste keys or cut keys or anything like that also allows me to select tangents. So if I wanna make this specific key stepped, there you go, I have that key stepped. So very powerful. Now, the good thing about these marking menus now is that this specific uh, menu, you could not change it before to actually have something that you like. Now you can. So if you go into Windows, Settings and Preferences, and then Hotkey Editor, you get this familiar window that if you haven't seen before, I've talked about this before, so make sure you select previous episodes because I go uh, through quite a few uh, useful hotkeys. If you select uh, application command and search for marking, you have all kinds of different marking menus that you can select from, which will make your life much easier. Now, tip number three is to do with audio. Now, audio is something very interesting because um, it's been the same uh, in Maya for quite a while. So I'm just gonna show you uh, the differences in audio that you can actually get now, which is very interesting to me, and I really, really enjoy them. Um, so now I have a brand new scene, and when it comes to sound, uh, the Maya settings have been the same for quite a while. And the way you have to import an audio file is by right-clicking audio, import audio. It will open another window right here, and then you'll source your audio and you'll get in. The other way for you to get an audio file was to drag and drop. So I'm just gonna drag a sample and then you can actually see the file right here. Now, as you can see, as soon as you drag it, the audio uh, file is actually right in the middle as if it was a, a, a like an audio editor, which is really, really cool. And this is actually a first because uh, this used to be very different from before. And um, before, uh, I believe the default settings were like this. <laughs> so whenever you actually added an audio file, this is what you would see. So let's say you're actually doing lip sync, it's very difficult to actually match, match the audio uh, to your Maya scene. So the fact that now, whenever you right click on top of this icon here, um, allows you to not only change how loud things are, because before it was like max all the time, so you had to down, like, turn down the volume, but Maya was turned down, but then now your music, if you listen to it, is turned down. It's really, it's really weird. So now Maya allows you to specifically have like an audio volume that you can set. And on top of that, allows you to actually kind of uh, get this centered. And centered is so much better. I love it. It makes the waveform so much more neat. Uh, allows you to see the spikes much, much better. And because now you can re the change that uh, the size of your timeline to whatever you want all of a sudden you have a massive timeline with your waveform looking really nice right in the middle and then you can actually see where your beats are while you are talking or while you're doing your facial animation so beautiful stuff from autodesk really enjoyed it once again you can actually change the um, which track you're using you can actually use track sounds just like before. You can adjust the volume if you want to. Uh, delete sounds if you have different tracks, you can actually delete them as well. So much more malleable when it comes to editing your audio files. So that is basically the tips that I had for you guys. I hope this is useful, uh, just like last time. Not very many, but I hope you guys actually kind of uh, enjoyed this whole series. It's been a pleasure to do it. Once again, thanks to Autodesk to actually sponsor this series. Highly appreciate it. And uh, if you guys want any more, then drop a comment down below. Tell us what you want to see, what kind of questions do you have, what kind of features do you want me to cover, and maybe next season we'll cover them. Until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.